Good afternoon. This is Mrs. Bloom, and I am going to be reading Chapter 8, The Legacy of Rome in the Modern World, from the text online textbook and from your packets. This is for the first packet. Chapter 38, Legacy of the Modern World, To What Extent Does Ancient Rome Influence Us Today? 38.1, Introduction. In this chapter, you will learn about contributions the Romans made to the modern world. These are in the areas of art, architecture, engineering, language, government, and the law. In the year 1764, long after the Roman Empire had fallen, a young Englishman named Edward Gibbon visited the city of Rome. Gibbon saw the ruins of ancient buildings such as the Roman Colosseum. He marveled at Roman statues and the remains of aqueducts and bridges. He wondered how did such a great empire come to an end. Gibbon decided to write a book about the Roman Empire. More than 20 years later, Gibbon finally laid down his pen. His works filled six books. He called it the history of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. It became a very important work of history. Why did Gibbon spend so many years learning and writing about ancient Rome? One reason is that Rome has had an enormous influence on Western civilization. As one empire, excuse me, as one historian said, Rome perished yet it lived on. In this chapter, you will discover how and why the Roman Empire came apart. Then you will learn Rome's influence on lives in modern architecture, art, engineering, language, philosophy, and law. I did not have you read about the end of the Roman Empire, but we will pick up with 38.3, Art. The Romans adopted aspects of other cultures. They modified and blended them into their own culture. This was true of Roman art. The Romans were especially influenced by the art of the Greeks. In fact, historians often speak of Greco-Roman art. The Romans were skilled in creating realistic statues. They imitated Greek sculpture, but they were particularly good at making their sculptures true to life. The homes of wealthy Romans were decorated with colorful murals and mosaics. Again, the Romans took existing art forms and made them their own. They painted beautiful frescoes, a type of mural. Frescoes are painted on moist plaster with water-based paints. Roman frescoes often showed three-dimensional landscapes and other scenes. Looking at one of these frescoes is almost like looking through the wall at a scene outside. You've probably seen similar murals in modern restaurants, banks, and on the sides of buildings and in other public places. The Romans were also great patrons or sponsors of art. They paid thousands of painters, sculptors, and craftspeople to create their works. As a result, the Romans left behind many examples to inspire future generations. A thousand years after the fall of the Roman Empire, Roman art was rediscovered during a period called the Renaissance. Great artists such as Michelangelo revived the Greco-Roman style in their paintings and sculptures. A famous example is the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel in Rome. The ceiling shows scenes from the Bible painted by Michelangelo in the 1500s. A Roman would feel right at home looking up at this amazing creation. Roman art has continued to influence painters and sculptors. Roman styles were especially popular during the early days of the United States. Americans imitated these styles to give their art dignity and nobility. For example, many statues in the capital, Washington, D.C., reflect a strong Roman influence. The Romans also brought a sense of style and luxury excuse me, to everyday objects. They made highly decorated bottles of blown glass. For example, a bottle might be shaped like a cluster of grapes. Romans also developed the arts of gem cutting and metalworking. One popular art form was the cameo. A cameo is a raised carved portrait of a person's head or a carved scene. The Romans wore cameos as jewelry and used them to decorate vases and other objects, such as vases. You can find examples of all of these art forms today. Thirty-eight point four Roman architecture. The Romans' greatest contributions to science and technology came in the fields of architecture and engineering. Roman builders learned from the Greeks, Etruscans, and others. Then they added their own genius to make construction in new directions. Architecture. The Romans learned how to use the arch, the vault, and the dome. A vault is an arch used to support a roof. A dome is a series of vaults that form a high rounded roof. The Romans were first to make widespread use of concrete. 
They made it by mixing broken stone with sand, cement, and water, and then allowing the mixture to harden. With the use of concrete, they were able to build much bigger arches than anyone had attempted before. Roman baths and other public buildings had often had great arched vaults. The Pantheon, a magnificent temple, now a church that still stands in Rome, is famous for its huge dome. The Romans also invented a new kind of building, a stadium. It was a large open-air structure. The Romans used concrete to build tunnels in the now famous Colosseum in Rome. The tunnels made it easy for spectators to reach their seats. Modern football stadiums still use this feature. The grand style of Roman building has inspired many architects throughout the centuries. One Roman invention that was widely copied is the triumphal arch. This is a huge monument built to celebrate great victories or achievements. One modern example is the Arc de Triomphe in Paris, France. It's, this monument celebrates the victories of the French Emperor Napoleon in the early 1800s. Today it is the National War Memorial of France. You can see a Roman influence in the design of many modern churches, banks, and government buildings. A fine example is the Capitol Building in the home of the U.S. Congress in Washington, D.C. It includes arches, columns, and a dome. Engineering. The Romans changed engineering as well as architecture. They were the greatest builders of roads, bridges, and aqueducts in the ancient world. About 50,000 miles of road connected Rome with the frontiers of the empire. The Romans built their roads with layers of stone, sand, and gravel. Their techniques set the standard of road building for 2,000 years. In some parts of Europe, vehicles still drive on freeways built over Roman roads. The Romans also set a new standard for building aqueducts. They did not invent aqueducts, but once again, the Romans learned the techniques and improved it. They created a system of aqueducts for Rome. The aqueducts brought water from about 60 miles away to the homes of the wealthiest citizens, as well as to the city's public baths and fountains. The Romans built aqueducts in other parts of the empire as well. The water system in Segovia, Spain, still uses part of the ancient Roman aqueduct. Remains of Roman aqueducts can also be seen in Europe, North Africa, and Asia Minor. Language. One legacy of Rome that affects us every day is the Roman language, Latin. We use the Latin alphabet, although Latin, Roman Latin has 23 letters and English uses 26. Many of our words come from Latin. Latin proverbs are still in use. For example, look at the reverse side of the U.S. dime. You will see the words e pluribus unum. This is Latin for out of many, one. This is the official motto of the United States. The motto reminds Americans of how the United States was formed by the colonies joining together. Several modern European languages also developed from Latin, including Italian, Spanish, and French. English is a Germanic language, but was strongly influenced by the French-speaking Normans who conquered England in 1066 CE. English has borrowed heavily from Latin, both directly and by way of French. You can see the influence of Latin in many words we use today. For example, our calendar comes from one adopted by Julius Caesar. The name of several months come from Latin. August honors Caesar Augustus. September comes from the Latin word meaning the seventh month. The Roman year started in March. October means the eighth month in Latin. Many English words start with Latin prefixes. A prefix is a set of letters at the beginning of a word that carries its own meaning. Attaching a prefix to a root word creates a new word with a new meaning. In fact, the word prefix is formed this way. It comes from pre, in front of, and fix, to fasten or attach. The table on the opposite page shows other examples. As you can see from the table, other English words come from Latin root words. For instance, manual developed from manus, the Latin word for hand. Finally, we, we still often use Roman numerals. The Romans used a system of letters to write numbers. Look at the bottom section of the table. You may see Roman numerals such as these on clocks, sundials, and the first pages of books, like this one. You might also find Roman numerals on buildings and in some movie credits to show the year they were made. The Romans combined the seven letters shown in the table to express larger numbers. Putting letters after another adds to the value of the additional letters. For example, V-I-I-I -I -I means 5 plus 3 or equals 8. 
and xx means 10 plus 10 equals 20. Putting a letter before a letter with a greater value subtracts its value. For example, iv means 5 minus 1 or 4, and ix means 10 minus 1 or 9. And I will let you look at these pages. Thirty-eight point six, philosophy and law. Like art and architecture, Roman philosophy and law were greatly influenced by the Greeks. But the Romans made contributions of their own, and pass on to future generations. Philosophy. Many Romans followed a philosophy known as Stoicism. First developed by the ancient Greeks, this system of thinking was adopted by the ancient Romans and followed until about 200 CE. Stoics believed that a divine intelligence ruled all of nature. A person's soul was a spark of that divine intelligence. Stoics believed that the right way to live was in a way that agrees with nature and its laws. To the Stoics, the key to life was to have a good character. This meant having virtues such as self-control and courage. Stoics disagreed with those who said that happiness meant only avoiding pain and only experiencing pleasure. They highly prized duty and the welfare of the community over their personal comfort. They believed that true happiness was a peace of mind that came from living up to Stoic ideals. The most famous Roman Stoic was the Emperor Marcus Aurelius. Aurelius wrote down his private thoughts in a book he called To Himself. Later it was retitled Meditations. In his writing, Aurelius constantly reminded himself of Stoic ideals. He said not to worry if you encounter ungrateful insults, disloyalty, or selfishness. If you think and act rightly, none of these things can hurt you. Stoics were famous for bearing up pain and suffering bravely, quietly. To this day, we call someone who behaves in this way a Stoic. Law and Justice the Stoics' beliefs about justice and nature fit very well with Roman ideals about law. Roman law covered marriages, inheritances, contracts, and countless other aspects of daily life. Modern law codes in European countries, such as France and Italy, are partly based on Roman law. Another legacy of the Romans was their concept of justice. Romans believed that nature provides a universal law of justice. Under this natural law, they believed every person has natural rights. Romans spread this idea by applying it to all citizens of the empire. Judges in Romans courts tried to make just or fair decisions that respected individual rights. Like most people, the Romans did not always live up to their ideals. Their courts did not treat the poor or slaves equally with the rich. Emperors often made bad laws, but the Roman ideals of justice and natural law live on. The U.S. Declaration of Independence and U.S. Constitution were influenced by Roman ideals about law and government. Like judges in Roman courts, modern-day judges make decisions based on these ideals as well as on written law. Similarly, many people today believe that all humans have a basic right that no written law can take away. Chapter Summary In this chapter, you learned about the fall of the Roman Empire and explored its legacy. The end of the empire in the west, by 500, the Roman Empire had split. The eastern empire lasted for over a thousand years, but the western empire collapsed due to political instability, economic and social issues, and the weakening of the frontiers. Art. Modern artists still follow Roman or Greco-Roman styles in the arts. Murals and mosaics, much like Roman ones, decorate modern buildings and public spaces. Architecture and engineering. Roman architecture influences are seen in the structures of many modern buildings. The Romans were also talented engineers, whose construction methods and standards lasted thousands of years. Language. Many words and word parts in modern languages, such as English, French, and Spanish, come from Latin. Roman numerals appear today on clocks, in books, and in movie credits. Philosophy and Law. Roman ideals such as Stoicism, the rule of law, and justice shape law and governments in many modern nations. Examples include today's law courts and documents such as the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution. That is all for Chapter 38. I will work on video and reading Chapter 32 and then 35 at a later time. Have a great afternoon.